जिस तरीके से जतिन में आप बात कर रहे थे कि अलग अलग फेजेस में किस तरीके से देखने को मिलेगा बल्लेबाज किस तरीके से खेलेंगे जैसा आपने कहा कि Really appreciate you guys both joining us to discuss the Indian Premier League. Um, obviously, the IPL is the biggest sport. Arguably, I think you almost argue on the planet in terms of pure viewership and engagement. So, Sandra, I wanted to kind of give you, let you start with a little bit of an overview of Star India, um, how big your average audience is for IPL, and and what the return of IPL meant to the uh, to India and to Indians. Uh, thanks, Ken. First of all, thank you so much for invi- inviting us to be a part of this. Um, it's it's a pleasure to to chat with you. Um, so, uh, a quick background into Star India, and I'll and I'll keep this brief. Uh, Star India is uh, India's largest broadcaster of sport. It happens to also be Asia's largest broadcaster of sport and the largest broadcaster of cricket in the world. Um, it is. Um, we are a part of the Disney Group, um, and um, you know um we we have interests in general entertainment movies and sports uh, we also run india's uh, largest ott platform um disney plus hotstar uh, so that's that's a quick background uh, into what star does um we entertain close to 700 million viewers every week uh, across the length and breadth of our network uh, across entertainment movies and sports um and you know we we take our mission of um of of telling stories and reimagining india very seriously uh, we believe that we are the nation's storytellers and we are uh, responsible to some extent for bringing a lot of joy to people's lives every night uh, whether it is through our shows whether it's through our movies and or whether it's through our sports broadcasts and it's in in the light of that that we must uh, must see our interest in sport uh, be we got into sport in 2012 where we acquired rights for india cricket uh, after which uh, we've over the next 8 years looked to grow significantly viewership for cricket itself but also build two sports leagues from scratch one being a soccer league um, which is the isl uh, in partnership with the uh, reliance and the other uh, a sport a league called pkl which is a pro kabaddi league in a sport called kabaddi which you may not be familiar with but is a is an indian indigenous sport which had gone missing from people's consciousness it was played as a recreational amateur sport but we brought it back as a professional sport or a professional league uh, in in 2014 and that happens to now be the second biggest sporting league in the country um so that's you know that's that's our background in sport ipl is you know really the crown jewel of indian sport it is as you rightly said the biggest sporting event that happens in india um on an average anything between 550 to 600 million viewers will watch it every year uh, across two months that the tournament lasts um it's a game every night on some days it's two games one in the afternoon one at one at night um this year was you know a very special year um and I, and i don't mean to sound insensitive so i i guess special is not the right word but maybe a very unique year with unique challenges but i think it was also a very unique year for ipl because this year ipl means much more than being just a sporting tournament uh it is um, as i was telling you earlier uh, a a harbinger of joy relief inspiration belief um and 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 
you know so much more than than and is so much more than just a sports event it is after what the country has been through over the last 6 7 months it is um, in some sense uh you know a, a moment in in um, a moment for the the national sentiment in the country to pivot uh, and we believe that it it you know given that it also coincides with their festive season it has the potential to really change national sentiment and uh bring joy back to people's lives and which is why i think the context of the ipl is that much more significant this year uh than any year prior to this um and and which is why it is it is the kind it is the kind of commitment uh that uh, that star wanted to make uh to more than anything else uh bring joy back to people's lives Sure, sure. So, so the current situation right now is that the tour, uh, the season's ongoing, but it's being played in the UAE. <clears throat> so, can Sanjay, can you walk through that decision making process? Was there ever a consideration to play the season in India, or was it from the get go? Okay, we need to find a place to have a secure um, bubble, I guess, for lack of a better word. I think the the initial conversation within bcci um, which is the 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 federation or the board that runs cricket in india and also runs ipl uh, the initial consideration was um, to have it in india and 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 to be fair uh, they explored all kinds of models to make it possible in india but i think the situation just didn't allow for the tournament to happen in india in a manner which could be considered fully safe um and and they had to take the tough decision to move it out of india but they did um explore all kinds of alternatives uh before taking that decision uh but eventually the situation with 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 the pandemic in the country was such that it just didn't allow any model to be secure um and and which is why they had to take the hard call of of moving it to uae um uae obviously presented a unique opportunity where uh you know the, the the situation with the pandemic was a lot better uh the 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 board felt that the in 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 conjunction with the government and the authorities in in uh, in sharja abu dhabi and dubai they will be able to pull off a um, a, a tournament which is safe and secure and uh, decided to proceed with it excellent excellent well so prashant walk me through the Uh, and everybody else, I guess, through the uh, the production workflow. So once you heard that, um, you know, the tournament, not the tournament, the season will be played in the UAE. What was the ripple effect as far as your production planning and how that had to adjust? Right. So you know, we had uh, I think two two important co- considerations there. You know, the first being uh, trying to send as few people as possible. You know, to another country from a production perspective, which obviously meant to look at ways where we weren't doing on ground production as such you know that is the first mandate that came from you know sanjog here and 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 the plan was to how do we make sure that people the lesser people would mean their you know it it's safer uh, you know so that was our first consideration and that meant we had to look at you know go back to our models of doing remote production which we you know began almost from 2 years back with with the first ipl and you know especially in the uae it was you know all this while you know uae is known for ku band uh, you know broadcast uh, pretty much uh, you know and finding a c band uh, you know satellite option was difficult you know there are very few ob bands or technologies that are available and it meant that we were looking at more and more in terms of a remote production operation uh, you know we also know that uh, you know fiber in the uae is private so you know it can get commercially unviable at times and that's why you see a lot of events happening on on satellite but uh, you know it was a big challenge we said let's try and see how we can put all of this together uh, really push for making it viable both commercially and operationally to look at fiber as an option and and i think the team worked really hard to in a short window of about 6 weeks to be able to connect all three stadiums via 1 gig fiber network that comes all the way back to mumbai uh, and that meant we could substantially reduce the number of people that would you know travel to the uae and have a you know a, a remote operation center in mumbai uh, in india where we could potentially house everyone in a bubble and then turn around this uh, multi language production gotcha gotcha yeah so so walk me through let's go to the uae virtually so what is the um 
for at any given, let's take any of the stadiums, like what's the, what's the typical footprint? Who is on site personnel wise? Uh, how many trucks are there? How many cameras? Just some of those high level details for, for in, in the UAE. Sure. So it's a, you know, in India or, you know, from a cricket production perspective here, we normally don't do trucks. You know, it's more like uh, production control rooms that are, you know, set up uh, in each, each of the premises in within the, uh, perimeters of the stadium itself or you know around the perimeters of the stadium itself and the crew effectively ranges from anywhere between on on one particular match day between about 100 to 120 people and and this would range from uh, you know from the director the vision mixers the evs operators the graphics guys uh, you know the engineering support that effectively comes with it and this is more for not just one feed, but we're effectively doing one world feed production and doing one unilateral feed production, which is effectively, you know, comes back to us here. And then we do, uh, you know, a multi-language, multiple multi-language graphics and commentary production out of that. So the same team effectively is originating a feed, two feeds for us. And, you know, those feeds come back to do, uh, you know, five additional languages, uh, you know, for, for IPL. So, it would be similar to any OB setup that, that you would possibly have for, you know, say any of the other events. Uh, of course, the number of cameras, you know, increase, uh, you know, a lot more, you know, we effectively have any, anywhere between 32 to 34 cameras for a, for a, for an IPL game. This of course also ranges between, uh, you know, your actual cameras where the game is covered from, and then you have super slow mos and, you know, ultra motion cameras and Hawkeye and, and and so on and so forth. So that's that's largely the framework. Of course, you know, uh, some of the considerations this year was how do we change camera angles, knowing there won't be you know audiences anymore in the stadium. How do we make sure the game is covered in a you know slightly different way? Uh, so yeah, with with all of that put together, it's yeah effectively between 100 and 100 to 120 people on ground gotcha. uh, at each location. So are the, are the EVS operations or replay operations being done in UAE or are they done remotely back in Mumbai? So it's yes. both, if I can, get, if I can answer that, uh, just, just, to exp- just to give a slight context, Ken, uh, there, there are almost two parallel productions happening. Uh, one production is happening in the UAE uh, at the venue. And then there is a parallel production, which is actually a, a significantly large operation back in our central production facility in Mumbai. So think of any game being played in, in the UAE, in, in let's say Dubai, uh, as being produced by the 120 odd crew members at the venue. And then over the top of that, another, um, the, the total crew size is, you know, is, is 400 to 450 at the, at, you know, as part of the production in Mumbai across multiple feeds that are being produced. So the same game, effectively, the way we produce IPL or any big cricket game is that there are two parallel production productions. One production is at the venue, which is producing what we call the world feed, which is distributed globally. And then um, that feed is being fully customized um, using, as, as Prashant was saying, um, the remote operation at the central production facility in Mumbai, which then is servicing six different feeds um, or six different services uh, for on six different networks uh, in different languages, with different language graphics, with different narratives, uh, with different commentators, um, and basically as an independent operation. So the, the way to think about it is, is, in, is that there are two parallel productions happening. Uh, and uh, at any given point of time, these services are being offered to consumers across India and around the world. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So great. So, so then as far as the, um, let's, let me, I guess one of the big things we've had of, you know, the NFL, um, NBA obviously had a very famous bubble, NFL's less bubbles and, and um, but you know, still people are working in the field, people are working remotely tied into those games, uh, Major League Baseball, same thing. So what has been the, from the crew standpoint, what's been their reaction to working in this way? Let's start with the people who are in the UAE. How are they holding up? Um, how are they getting along? And, and are they, holding up a well emotionally and that's one of the big challenges here yeah i i think um, it's been it's been great and credit to all of them and the entire crew actually in in mumbai and in uae for uh, making this commitment 
um, and really dedicating themselves in some sense to national service, which is what this IPL has become. Um, it's, uh, it, things are great. I, I think everyone's happy to be inside the bubble and get to do what they love doing. Um, and, you know, if, if to do what they love doing, they have to stick to certain SOPs or protocols, which are not natural, but uh, at the same time are not prohibitive. Um, they're happy to do so. So, uh, so in, in, in that sense, I think uh, the crew is holding up quite well. Um, they're supercharged to, to do this, you know, at the end of the day, what, what drives all of us to do this day in and day out and, and work crazy hours is, is the love for the game and, and love for the broadcast and love for bringing that broadcast to fans. And I think that opportunity, everyone is really kicked about. We're halfway through, actually more than halfway through now. And uh, I think the crew is just as charged about each day's broadcast as they were when we were starting off. Yes, there are, you know, there are constraints. Um, it is not normal. Uh, there are every now and then minor issues that, that crop up. But largely, I think the, the team has truly em embraced um, the IPL as being bigger than us uh, and, and needing, as a result, a, a, a level of commitment that, um, that perhaps uh, we wouldn't ordinarily make. Right, right. Yeah, Prashant, what's your take from talking to your, your team and, and the crew? And you were there for a little bit, right? In the, in the early days, I believe? Yes, yes. In fact, both me and Sanjo were there. You know, we've been away from home since 22nd of August now. Uh, and it'll go on till, uh, you know, mid-November. So, uh, yeah, it's been, I think it's been interesting. The only difference, uh, you know, from the crew here uh, is been, you know, most of the time when you're producing sports, you're on tours or, you know, you're on ground, uh, you know, so you're traveling for that duration except for the people who would normally go back home and then come, you know, for them to be part of the bubble has been slightly, you know, uh, I would say a different experience. Uh, but it's been, you know, living together as a large family of 450 odd people, you know, eating together, uh, you know, working together and knowing you are going back to the same place, uh, you know, once the game is over in the evening. Uh, I think it's kind of a routine that set in. Uh, we were a lot more, or I think the people were slightly anxious before it was to start, but now it's a complete routine of, you know, every single day, match production, knowing what you have to do, things for the next day. So I think it's, it's, it's more... Uh, I, it's more clockwork now. So, you know, I don't think there is enough time uh, that people have to really sit down and think about, you know, or they have enough free time on their hands to really, you know, feel that the bubble is really getting onto them. Sure, sure. So are there people who are working from home? Is anybody working from their house uh, or in these productions? So who, and, and if so, who and where? Yeah, so it's a really interesting, uh, you know, you, uh, you know, we spoke about the 450 people here in the bubble, but we have close to about 120, uh, you know, people, including our presenters and talent, which are actually working from home, uh, you know, and, and, and this whole idea actually came about, of course, uh, you know, when we were planning for the IPL. And like I mentioned in the beginning, you know, the first ask from management was to make sure that we, you know, are conscious about the, you know, safety of people and, you know, and bringing in, bringing in what was absolutely necessary. So in that sense, you know, we were, these 100 odd people range from everybody, from your EVS operators, uh, you know, to uh, audio engineers, to, you know, uh, uh, VMs, to directors, to actual talent who are doing commentary from home, uh, you know, in terms of bringing in, you know, virtually in vision cameras, so to speak. We were able to leverage, you know, a lot of technology like SRT and, you know, and, and some of those options. Uh, I think this work from home is slightly also different and true remote in the sense that we are actually working from using hardware that currently resides in the office and, you know, leveraging those zero or thin clients on their actual computers for them to be able to function. So, you know, the hardware remains same for everyone. Uh, right. And, you know, the mainframe pretty much stays in the office. So I would say, yeah, there is a substantial amount of non-live work, uh, you know, that is happening with the help of these people who are actually working out of home. Right, right. So by having the hardware, <clears throat> you know, this is one of the things that came up uh, with our last event on IP production. I guess the key is that bandwidth between their home and your facility is much less of an issue, right? Because they're not necessarily moving big files and big content back. They're just moving controls, right? So it's just sort of, I mean, Kevin Callahan of Fox Sports mentioned it's like kilobits per second. It's not 
megabits. And uh, is that the same thing for you guys there? Yes, it is. I think, uh, you know, and, and uh, what we've realized is that, you know, nothing is a challenge in this environment except for bandwidth. You know, you can pretty much solve for everything. Right. But the actual roadblock just pretty much comes at, you know, uh, at, at that point. Uh, you know, what we did to solve for it was try and partner with some of the ISPs or, you know, the internet service providers, essentially to try and figure out models where we could find some sort of dedicated bandwidth that could be allocated to the key functions, say, for example, an EVS operator who's operating from home and necessarily needs higher bandwidth, uh, you know, as compared to somebody who's working purely on data. Uh, but even then you realize that, you know, because the commitment on bandwidth that they tell you versus what you actually get always varies. So yeah, it's, right. that's, mm-hmm. I would say is one of the biggest challenges pretty much. Yes. They always say up to. They never say, <laughs> right? It's always, so, so well, let's talk a little bit about the, the, the new normal, which, and, and Sandra, I'll start with you because I think people all around the world who are doing these workflows and doing these new ways of production are, are curious to see what's going to be the ripple effect for when things, God willing, within a year um, return to normal. What's your sense on what's going to stick, Sandra, in terms of either programming, um, what's working for the fans, Yeah, again, I, I I don't mean to be provocative, but but I think most of it. Um, I think uh, what COVID has done, or you know, and the situation resulting from COVID has forced us to do is one accelerate the change journey that we were already on or or thinking about. Um, so it's acted as an accelerant. The other thing that it has done is it has forced us to challenge and rethink convention, uh, which is always a good thing. Um, I I think what it has done is it has put us on a path um, to to do things more efficiently, but also do things more effectively um, and come up with solutions which will have lasting impact, not just on the ecosystem, but will force the technology to evolve more quickly. And, and I think that's the piece which we're really excited about. Uh, you know, pre-COVID, if someone had said that you will be able to connect hundreds of fans from all over the world and all over the country to the game by bringing them on uh, VCs, which are all put together on a fan wall or, 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 or on a mosaic, um, you would have probably laughed them off for two reasons. One, you would say, why is it even required? And two, you would think that it's preposterous. Um, but what this situation has done is that it has also forced us to question convention, right? Why is it? And, and this is the way that we looked at it. We didn't look at it as a, a, a problem that needs to be solved. We actually looked at it as, looked at it as an accelerated opportunity. Um, Just in terms of fan engagement, for example, uh, and and the point that I I was making, um, why is it that fans inside the stadium are connected to the game, but those outside the stadium have no way of cheering for their teams, right? At the end of the day, they are fans. The the only thing that is separating them is their location. Uh, what, What COVID has done is it has forced us to evaluate solutions which allow us which allow, which, which force us to allow fans to cheer from wherever they are, which is such a massive uh, value creator, right? It, it unlocks so much value because you're no longer restricted to fans who are inside the stadium. You are effectively talking to and letting them talk to you from wherever they are. And, and that not, doesn't just hold potential for the big properties. It holds a lot these kinds of solutions hold a lot of potential for sports that are much smaller and have niche audiences all over the country um, and are not able to fill stadiums because they're just not big locally, but can still attract a large enough set of spectators to fill the stadium. Right. Uh, And and I think that that breaking of boundaries between who is a fan and who is a viewer will unlock significant value in the future. Um, There are only one set of fans, right? Some fans happen to be in the stadium. Some fans happen to be at home. Why should all fans not have the opportunity to cheer? There's something really interesting that we tried 
or or you know have which has received tremendous response is we are allowing fans to cheer from home using emojis right so we are we call we've, we've called it interactive audio where uh, fans can cheer for a player inside the stadium by using emojis on the social feed that we have available on the, on our ott platform disney plus hotstar right so a player is going to walk out and you want to chant for him hit the emojis if the if that emoji starts trending effectively the chant gets played in the stadium so it's a great way for millions of fans to be able to express themselves and feel more connected with the game so i think a lot of these um, evolutionary changes um, which which seem to have been accelerated by covid were going to happen in any case right um, i think what what covid has done is it has acted as an accelerant and if serious value has to be unlocked even in the long term then these changes in some form or manner and i'm not saying that the technology or the innovation will not evolve further they will they, they probably will but they will be a part of what the new normal is because they have the potential to unlock so much more value both commercially and in terms of fan engagement sure that's great that's great yeah prashant what's your sense on um it's it's fascinating because every time i talk to everybody everybody says basically what you say sanjay which is they is accelerant <clears throat> you know everything's going to accelerate right now and that a lot of this stuff is going to stick around so prashant what's your sense from you know the production team they're working in two bubbles right now they right they are separated what's your sense on when things get back to normal you know when the when those operations in the uae fold back into india uh what the what the impact is on on the production team you know will they will they all be working in mumbai then or obviously some of them will still be at the stadiums what's your sense on on the the changes yeah i think it's it's the the change has been pretty drastic you know a lot of it has been forced upon us but you know we've kind of sort of realized that you can do a lot of this you know where we thought that you know a lot of the functions cannot happen unless you are on ground or you know in the facility uh, you know you can know that for a fact that you know those can be turned around now you know evs is a big example you know everybody believed that you have to be in the stadium graphics for example are you know something that you know now can be co-located anywhere in the world you know pretty much as long as you know the feeds have become easier the latency is reduced you know the size of the files are becoming smaller it's easier to move you know low res videos pretty much everywhere for you to be able to do those productions and i think what it does is it will enhance and improve the production overall because it gives people the flexibility not to travel be in their hometown be close to families you know still be able to work on multiple productions so i would say you know we've been doing remote production over the last 2 3 years it actually now becomes smaller bubbles of that remote production in those specific locations that will spring up you know for you to probably have a graphic sub in a city which could produce great graphic designers you know or or an evs or or you know replay artists that you know are are in a in a specific location so i think it it's it's only going to increase i think we'll really be in a hub and spoke model that gives us the flexibility to be able to leverage great talent around the country without having to move them around and you know use all this technology that's now available to us you know for even better productions sure sure that's great well we'll leave it there that's really great really appreciate your time today and thanks for staying up and staying with us because i know we're on vastly different time zones but that's okay but really appreciate both of you joining us and good luck obviously with the rest of the season and uh, of course above all stay safe thank you so thank much thank you so much again